We have Jim Bianco from Bianco Research, uh, president of that group. Jim, you, you've heard what we're, we're talking about here, the possibility of euro bonds uh, being perhaps the only solution right now. Uh, what do you see as the most probable outcome in Europe? Uh, as far as euro bonds go, they are only a solution to kick the can down the road. And then I have to disagree a little bit with Mort. They then blow up everything. The problem is we put together this backwards. They did, should have put together a fiscal union first. They should have put together rules of a yeah. common market mm. first and then followed up with the currency. Absolutely. They put together the currency first, and that's the problem. The problem yeah. in Europe is the euro. If they do ahead and make that same mistake by putting together another instrument right. like euro bonds without putting together common rules for who pays what, it'll work for a couple of t a, while, a couple of years and then after that once everybody's borrowed too much money again and germany can't pay the whole thing will start coming down around them well listen i i agree with you completely but uh, i know it's a shock but do you think politicians are willing to kick a problem down the road rather than try and resolve it somehow or other i have a feeling they're all susceptible to that but germany is going to hang in very 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 hard because their own people will throw out merkel out of office as there have been seven other european governments who've been thrown out of office so far they'll throw her if she just does exactly what you're saying but when you put the, put the bonds in it's going to be conditional on these kinds of shall we say fiscal controls or austerity programs that the germans insist uh, go forth in some of these other countries or else they won't help, help finance them refinance them you know the germans have have always said that they're in favor of a euro bond program as long as there are fiscal controls right. in place or as long as there's some kind of union. So they've never been against it per se. They've, they've, they've said the nuance that I said. Just don't do it first and try and write the rules around it after they're already in place. I agree. And so, and, and Merkel's party, especially with her coalition partner, the CDU, have really been real anti-euro bonds for that exact reason. So while the rest of Europe wants them badly, the Germans have no appetite for handing out money to the rest of the uh, Eurozone countries. So what's the timing on all this? More, I mean, how, how realistic is it to think that we could see something as soon as this summer? You know, I have to say to you, uh, it's unprecedented and therefore unpredictable. I don't know what the timing is. Everybody's going to try and avoid it and do whatever they can to avoid it. Mm -hmm. Germany is the key to it all. In the end, Merkel's got to decide, you know, does she allow all of this to blow up or does she find some way of putting forth a German promise or a German support subject, as we were saying just a moment ago, to some kind of conditions. Some countries will, will buy into it and some may not. And therefore, you're going to have a real, there's, there's no doubt in my judgment, but that Greece is going to leave the the eurozone it, it makes it's insane nobody should save the spanish banks because they made ridiculous loans and it's not worth it but there's going to have to be something done or else you're going to see a so, major so collapse you see greece leaving yeah soon yeah within the next couple of months within the next couple of months yeah. jim do you agree with that i i think there is a real realistic chance that greece could wind up leaving <laughs> I am one that worries that Greece leaving does have a contagion right, effect. Right. If you could give me a scenario where Greece leaves and everybody doesn't start the parlor game as to when Spain is going to leave, then it's okay. But I'm afraid that that parlor game will start five minutes after Greece leaves. When is Spain going to be right. thrown out? When is Portugal going to be thrown out? And, and then the whole thing could come unraveled well, at that point. It's not just a parlor yeah. game, right? No, that's a market. Yeah. That's, a, that's an investment no, game. But, People but, will be buying right. and selling on that. Right. right. No, that's exactly the problem. You, you already have a huge flight of capital from many, every one of these countries that are so weak. The banks are just losing money. The banks are broke at this stage of the game. I don't know how they come to, up with a solution to it. I mean, all these problems are very real, as uh, Mr. Bianco said. Absolutely. They're, 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 those are the critical issues. And it's so far, to this point, it's very difficult to get the kind of political agreement you need in order to do the kind of macroeconomic uh, responses. You know, Jim, we did hear uh, Fed Chairman Bernanke say today that, that, you know, the Fed is watching Europe very, very carefully and is prepared to step in in the event that it needs to if things continue to get bad in Europe. I'm asking, is there anything the Fed can do at this point to shield us from a European contagion and a financial meltdown of sorts there? Well, they've done what they can over the last year or so. They've asked a lot of the American banks to distance themselves with their uh, interbank lending with European banks. A lot of the American money f market funds have reduced their exposure to European banks, and this has been ongoing for several months. But that's about all they can do. If you're going to ask the question as to um, can we be completely shielded, no. 25% of all U.S. bank assets have as their parent a European bank. 
Uh, Europe is our biggest trading partner as a whole as well. Its economy is larger, the entire EU, than the United States. Mm -hmm. If they're going to have problems, it's going to cause ripple effects all around the world, and we can never completely insulate ourselves from something yeah. like that. You agree? I agree. I agree completely with that. I think that sums it up as well as it can be summed up. Somebody's going to have to come up with a magic wand. I don't see a magic wand out there. Do you see a, do you see a, a, a magic person? I mean, everyone's wondering who the Alexander Hamilton of Europe is going to be. Do you, it's not going to be Angela Merkel, right? Well, no, she's the only one who can play the role. Germany is the only one that could really save this situation, and they're going to have to make a very, very, very difficult decision where both, whatever you decide, is going to be a very tough decision to implement. Yeah, those are some big footsteps to walk into, or to walk in, rather. Jim Bianco of Bianco Research, thank you so much for joining thank us. You. Um, more, just before we let you go, I, I, I'd just like to get your final thoughts because a lot of what we've talked about here um, has really reflected a lot of your bearish sentiment and concerns about yeah. growth, not just here in the U.S., but obviously serious, serious problems abroad, both in Europe and in China. And, they, and India. And India. We didn't even get to no. India, but I know you're concerned about that as well. I mean, at the same time, you know, we as a country, as a nation, as a world, we move on and you know we often look back on on times of stress like this and think you know maybe that would have been an opportunity to to invest um things weren't as dark as they seemed at that moment how long do you think this is all going to take and and what's going to eventually get us out of it you know i, I don't know how long this is going to take and i don't know what's going to get us out of it i mean time is one thing that's going to get us out of it but how much time and at what cost nobody really knows at this stage of the game i think we know that we are in a country where there's virtual political paralysis so there's going to be no fiscal stimulus that we can have we're not going to redo our tax code which is a joke we're not going to redo uh, deal with our budget deficits, which we had the chance to do and passed up on that opportunity. So the, our options are very limited. We're going to, it seems to me, do virtually nothing until the next election. Does there and need the, to be change then in Washington, um, both in the top office and, and on Capitol Hill? I, I, I don't know. This is something everybody has to make up their own mind about, so I'm not going to sort of uh, advocate uh, uh, any particular candidate, but what I can advocate is policies, and we have missed year in, year out for the last several years. We have not taken the necessary policy steps. The the, the uh, Simpson-Bowles program, for example, would have given some confidence that we we're going to get our fiscal deficits under control. What we're doing is, well, there's now some deleveraging, but the deleveraging at the private sector is being taken up by additional leveraging by the government sector. So we've really not solved the problem. Now, you know, we, we can take it because we have a much more self-sufficient economy. But the rest of the world can't, and we are not invulnerable. It, what frustrates me and frustrates a lot of people in the business world is that nothing really essential has been done. We've got our, our work cut out for us. We sure a do. A lot of work ahead.